it is about five, about five twenty. Um, I just got done milking. Um, well, I got done milking and cleaning up, you know, all my milk stuff, uh, which is typical five, five fifteen, five thirty, getting done with everything. But uh, the the post office just called. Our uh, second set of broilers are in, so we're actually going right now to pick those up. So. Uh, We've got 35 coming. We've already got the water set up and got apple cider vinegar in it and we'll dip their beak when we get back. We've also also got a box set up. Now we've got three separate brooding uh, stations really in our garage, which is kind of nuts, but uh, we need to get the first set of chickens out. Uh, hopefully Misty will do that today um, because we have right behind this, we have our turkeys, ducks, and, and other set of turkeys coming in uh, over the next two to three weeks and also the ones in the incubation or incubator, excuse me. So we're gonna run and get these uh, these uh, little chicks and uh, get ready for the next set of uh, broilers as they come on the homestead. All right, and there they are. You can hear them chirping. So we're gonna get home, count them, make sure we have all accounted for and also make sure all of them are doing well. Uh, one good thing about a lot of these companies, they give you a 40 hour guarantee. So that way if something happens during shipping or one of them or two of them or three of them die or several of them die, then um, this company will make it right. So what we're gonna do is uh, get home, dip their beaks, put them in their new bedding house, new brooder, got lights on, and uh, welcome to the max. But uh, again, we'll see, we'll just make sure they're okay. Usually, again, I have not opened this box, we got 35, but normally they send maybe one or two more extras just for safety, uh, just because of uh, the situation of shipping birds. So uh, we've got them though, so let's head, home. Let's head back home. Okay, so we're back home. We're actually um, just to unbox them. What's so crazy? Look, we look like a hatchery. There's a whole set of the first chicks that we hatched for the season. There's a set of the old, or excuse me, the second set. We've got one more set of incubator, which are turkey and ducks. We've got these as our meat birds. We'll probably do another incubation of chicks too, or uh, just for just for our use as well. So we're gonna go ahead and, and get them out. Now, what we're gonna do is dip. They're beaking this. This has apple cider vinegar. They know where their water is, of course, but also it's just a, a great kickstart to their health, especially since they've been traveling. We're going to get them right under their heat lamp. And uh, let's see if we can count them and make sure we have all 35 accounted for. Okay, so they're they're all here. They're all healthy. No no problems. Uh, none of them so far have have died. Actually, on the way, I ordered 35. I only have 34, which is not a huge deal. But usually, with most hatcheries that we've seen, they they actually send us a few extra. Uh, in this case, they actually shorted us one and didn't send us the extra. So we're going to kind of watch them. If we see that one or two of them start dying, we're probably going to make a, a call. Uh, not to be difficult, but just to, you know, to make sure that we got what we were supposed to get. So, uh, but no, they're all they're all doing great. They're all gotten to their water. Mostly every one of them went to the water with us to put a little feed in here, and that way we'll be uh, kind of done with the chicks. Hey Ginger. Hey Ginger. Hey girl. Well, both these black cows, there's a, she's a, more of an Angus, and then that one behind her is a Brangus Angus Cross right there. This is Ginger right here in front, and that's Holly behind her. Uh, Y'all have seen these in some old videos. They're both so close to calving, especially Holly in the back. I mean, her back, she's bagged up really well. Uh, they just hadn't had the calf yet. If you had asked me last week, I got a bet on it last week, but she did not have it. But uh, Ginger is starting to bag up. She's a little behind her. But they're both looking really good. They're really full, really heavy, big old cow. So that's a good thing. The little white one's a little heifer. Uh, we have a video on her being born, uh, oh gosh, probably seven, eight months ago. But she has grown off really good. Uh, we're, her mom is a Charlay, big Charlay cow. 
Uh, and I, we, I think her daddy was a Hereford. Uh, they were thinking of Angus, but it's, it's reddish color she is. I think it's gonna be a Hereford, but she is growing off excellent. Beautiful, beautiful cow. I usually take a handful and throw it to the chickens. What is that? that? Give that to the, chi the pigs. That is just the top of the flowers that start trying to form seed pods. But hold on, see if they eat it. Oh yeah, they'll eat it. <laughs> that try to form seed pods to reproduce new. And we don't want them to die and reproduce new. We want them to keep making. So I take the flowers off and it, I mean, you can eat them just like that or we eat them, I eat them. Or you can get the bigger pieces of broccoli and put it all on a salad or however. But I also give, let that go into the green diet of the chickens and then the pigs too. Which I've never given any to the pigs, but I wanted to see if they would eat it, but they did. But it's good for them too. So I think it's amazing how just that one will do, that one plant will feed As so we're cutting, many things on the farm. You know, we're cutting it off and seeing beautiful bees. It's just, it's amazing. Yeah, and then the bees, that's right. The bees feed off of it too. You're exactly right. What do you think? Looks good. So we got the, the arbors up, or basically the trellises up for the tomatoes. We'll plant up both sides. Last year we were able to plant about 115 on these three rows, or not these exact three rows, but three rows just like it. And then we have our trellis. Um, this is our cucumber trellis. We lean it so those cucumbers can grow more naturally and kind of hang underneath. Uh, our cucumbers on it last year didn't do as good, but it's, we, we just had seed that didn't do real well here. Um, but they're, they always do fun. They're fun to watch them grow. And then some of them stay on top, but most of them just kind of fall through. So uh, again, we'll leave that closed for winter um just to be honest um i've enjoyed the extra few days of, of social distancing but what we did do if you remember we talked about going to this row right here um this was row 17. we did go ahead and add three more rows um all of this was supposed to be shifted down but we actually planted a little bit more of the garden some more peas and more beans some more cucumber, uh, I mean, excuse me, some more um, zucchini and squash and all those things. And the reason was just to give us a little bit more food security. So we went through after all this big storm, made sure there was nothing out of place. There was a few beans we had to recover and some kind of washed out. So we'll have a few holes to have to fix, but pretty much um, <clears throat> those tomatoes and the cucumbers. And this gives me two extra rows here that nothing's in. And we're gonna go ahead and plant some more uh, pink eye purple hole. That's, that's our favorite, mine, Aiden. And, and Ms. Mac's favorite, and um, uh, one of our girls, Eliza, likes them too. The other two girls, they, they like them so-so. Uh, I would love to plant soybeans here in edamame because that's what everybody loves, but just because we haven't grown edamame, I'm kind of scared to try and do two more rows of it that I could utilize to really grow some more su uh, sufficient vegetables. So Pink Eye Purple Hole, we still have some from last year, so they do really well here. So I want to be able to, to, to kind of keep that going. So everything's looking good. We're gonna go ahead and get the corn planted way down there on that other side and get cucumbers planted and get these other two row pe uh, peas planted. Okay, so I had this covered. I just moved that tarp over there, me and Aiden did. 
I did basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows of corn. Again, you know we've never had just the greatest local corn. Last year we got about 30 years, the year before about 60 years. I'm needing 150 for a year, basically. So I really need this to work. I try, I'm trying a different, use our plant on different rows. Also, I've been, I'm, I do move them, but this year I put uh, heavy pigs, um, heavy chicken all the way through here. And you see I've already put some cottonseed meal. I'm going to put a whole other bit of cottonseed meal again for ammonia, or excuse me, for nitrogen instead of ammonia, excuse me. Um, but basically this will allow it to hopefully get a good start. You know, corn is it's just a grass. Uh, the corn actually, the corn on the cob is just really a byproduct of the corn itself of the grass so we're gonna go ahead and just toss a little bit all through here and hopefully make it yellow but hopefully the whole purpose is to get it growing quicker those trellises look good over there i'm proud of those i'm glad those are done uh, other than the storm this morning it's been a pretty day so let's get this uh let's get the rest of the cotton tea meal on here move these t-posts because we move that tarp we're not going to do anything with that section because it always stays wet. That's where the chickens were most of the time and pigs too. But really, there's there's just nothing we can do unless we build it up. And I just don't see a necessity for it right now. Uh, we thought about doing watermelon. If we do, we may just do one, like straighten it out. You know, bring a, a box blade from our tractor just to smooth it out. And then just simply put weed barrier all over it. Uh, and then just plant in, in holes. So we thought about that and thought about sweet potatoes right there. So if so, I got to bring a lot more topsoil, smooth it out, and uh, and we'll, we'll see. I, I don't know if it's a necessity, but we may try it just because we have the space. So we'll just play by ear. Isn't it a beautiful day? Look at those sheep over there. We just got all the all the um, cottonseed mill down. You see it's like yellow looking. That's what we want. It's a heavy nitrogen booster. It's not rapid release as much as it just kind of time elapsed. So over time it'll help feed it, I hope. And I'm gonna come back and put some more on it, put some bone meal on it. I'm gonna really try to stay on top of fertilization, organic fertilization of corn. Cause I just don't think it's, it's hard to get an organic version of corn now. So we're gonna try to see what we can do. We're gonna water it, hold it in place, call it a day. Well, I got the boys moved over. This is one of the small tests we had for the day. Um, we got a, uh, all the dairy moved over but we had the boys the bulls left so they moved into this paddock um and it's, it's got pretty good grass in it we'll, we'll probably give them some hay but it actually is looking really nice right now still still some some fall grass coming but the winter grass uh i mean the winter grass is still here but some spring grass is starting to really come through and uh we're going it's good to see their heads down and eating that's what we want to see so we've got that still stockpiling again. They ate it one or ate it twice, and it's growing like wildfire. So actually, they'll move from this paddock here, cross this little way, and go straight to the old deer paddock again, one more time. Uh, I'm letting them graze that pretty pretty quickly first, let it rest, because most of that is winter grass, and most of that is stuff that grows early spring, winter, cool cool grass, what we call them. So we need them to go and graze that on down because it's going to pretty much die anyway and it's growing really good so we're going to let them eat especially that backside way back here it's growing really nice so we're going to let them graze it one more time and that way it allows these this paddock here which uh the dairy just got off of the middle paddock here and the back paddock which is where the boys were all that will be able to rest for probably a good 30 to 40 days before we start doing a heavier rotation uh, in the spring um, and summer, we, we get a little bit heavier on our rotation because ultimately the grass is growing a lot better. In the fall and winter, we tend to slow it down a good bit. You know, it's like something, it's, it's always nice being on the farm. I, just hearing the cows bellow and the chickens and roosters and even the lambs can hear from a distance. And, <clears throat> no matter how bad sometimes the world may get, sometimes just being on the farm just makes it easier. And you almost forget it. I mean, it's just a beautiful sight. The wind's blowing. A little sprinkle rain on the garden. It's just a pretty day. It makes you forget of all the turmoil when you leave your gates or leave your fence or leave your property. And I uh, have to go into the crazy world sometimes. But, um, it's just a pretty day. It's been a good day.